we are already five months into 2025. And this also means that there is a new release of Home Assistant. So let's see what's new in the May of 2025. We'll start in a couple of seconds. First, as always, I have to say that this video is recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant. If I'm not mistaken, Beta 3, which was released on Sunday. I try to record these videos about Home Assistant as late as possible, but still to have time to edit it so you can see it before or on the day when Home Assistant is released, to make sure that all the things that are intended to end up in Home Assistant actually do end up in Home Assistant. Let's get started with what's new. There is update to the backups, actually four updates in this release to backups, but unfortunately I will not be able to show you two of these. First one, we now have option also to backup Home Assistant OS. That means that before Home Assistant starts the update process of the OS, you now have option to select tick box and do backup of that too. Remember that also Home Assistant has a fail-safe build functionality in OS. There are two partitions, boot partitions A and B. For example, let's say that you are currently running Home Assistant OS 13 and you want to update to Home Assistant 14. Home Assistant will do the update to the B partition and it will also try to boot into that partition. If this fails a couple of times, I'm not sure it's three or five times to boot up in the B partition, it will automatically revert and go to the first partition where you have your previous OS version, but you were not able to do backup. This is fixed and now you can do backup of Home Assistant OS 2. Second new thing that I cannot show you because I currently do not have anything to backup is the change on how backups and restarts are processed. So for example, if you are starting the backup and the backup is in progress, the Home Assistant will, if you try to restart it, give you a warning and say that restart will happen after the backup is finished. This also can happen, for example, if you have a daily or nightly backups and you try to restart your Home Assistant. It will first finish the backup and later then it will restart Home Assistant. But now let's check out two additional things that you can do in Home Assistant that have been added in this release. If we go to backup settings, locations, and now click the cogwheel, you see new configuration option that was not previously available. This is retention for this system. For the locations, you can now select a specific retention policy that can either be global settings, so for example, three or five or seven last versions, or you can use forever, which is great if you have a network attached storage, such as for example, Synology that I'm using. I have unlimited space, let's say it like that, and then I can keep as much of backups as I want, or unlimited, or forever. Or, for each of the locations, you can also specify custom settings and select how many settings for that specific location. This works for all location, excluding Home Assistant Cloud. Home Assistant Cloud always keeps one or the latest backup of your system. While we are already here looking at the location settings, Let's skip down to add-on backup updates. Now you have option to select if you want default to be skip backups of add-ons or do backup before update. The only difference between now and previously is that now the default setting, the toggle bar will be moved in the whatever position you select here. So for example, if you select skip, it will be as previously not checked or if you want to do backup each time, it will be toggled in the on position. It will not automatically do the backup, it will just move the slider in one or the other position. One of the advantages in Home Assistant, besides of course backups, if you are using Nabucasa account, is the top-notch text-to-speech. And there has been a lot of improvement into that also. While you do not see it here with the Croatian language, we only have one female or one male voice. If you, for example, go to the English, let's say for example American English, we have more voices available. Besides default voice, we also now have, for example, customer service, chat, narration, professional, casual, formal, cheerful, empathic, angry, sad, excited, friendly, terrified, shouting, not just the pure voice of a aria here, but also emotions or lack of emotions included into text-to-speech. It is still not that easy to combine multiple expressions into single text-to-speech, but there are ways on how you can control that. 
If you're interested, drop me a line down below and we'll see how you can customize multiple messages and also answers from the system and also put some emotions in them. Unfortunately, as I said, this is also limited to the languages you are speaking or using. And this applies only to German, English, Spanish, French, Hindu, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portugal, I believe, and Chinese. For example, 31 voices previously for the Chinese and now 150 voices with variations. In English, 86 voices, now 199 voices. Not each voice that was previously in the system has some kind of emotions back to it, but some of the voices do and they have multiple variations. You know how hard it is sometimes to find the appropriate entity. For example, if I click here on Add Trigger in Automations, select an entity, Numeric State, and type here Temperature. For any temperature sensor, I have a list of sensors. And based on what you name your sensors, it may be very hard to find the appropriate temperature sensor. For example, nobody besides me will know that this I-9 PSL sensor is actually located in the living room. This has been updated and now we have much clearer idea of where each of the entities is located. Why? Because if I type in now temperature, I will also see if available, if I was smart enough to add areas, also area of the sensor. For example, this one is located in the loft, this one is in loggia, this is on balcony, this one is a living room, but it's part of the cube, so Akara cube inside temperature sensor, etc, etc. Hopefully, this will help you navigate your entities much more easier inside automations, scripts and, for example, cards. One thing that I still cannot show you, but hopefully I will have demo soon, although I do have two Z-Wave coordinators or Z-Wave network devices. One is actually sitting here, but it's not plugged, this station, and the other one is hooked up into my yellow machine that I'm using to record these videos, but I still cannot show you this. What's new with Z-Way? We have Z-Way Smart Start and also Long Range Support. And why so much effort is put into it is also not such a secret that Home Assistant or Nabucasa is building, besides Sky Connect or whatever it is called now, ZBT-1, the new coordinator or stick that will be used for Z-Wave. There are a lot of improvements. For example, now you can add Z-Wave devices by scanning the QR code, something that was not available directly in Home Assistant previously. Plus, the support for Z-Wave Long Range has been also added to Home Assistant. I know Z-Wave Long Range is maybe not available worldwide, but this is also changing. What is available in US should most probably be available in Europe soon. So we will have also Z-Wave Long Range. But it would not be a new release if there would not be a new integrations available. We now have Email Inverter, Mila, and TFI, and also S3. Plus also a bunch of new virtual integrations. Those integrations, let's call it like that, were previously also available in Home Assistant, but now are named correctly. And there are also other improvements to existing integrations. For example, support for air purifiers in HomeKit, PDF support, LLM support for fetching to-do list items, and much more. One integration has been moved to the EOI, and also one integration has been completely removed from Home Assistant. Plus, as always, bunch of other noteworthy changes. For example, Matter 1.4 water heater devices, type of water heater devices, has been added. Media players now have action to search using the search media action. And one nice thing from Frank is the support for detecting Home Assistant container installations that are not running in host networking mode. This is really important and I see a lot of errors or problems with people that do Docker or Dockerized version or container version Home Assistant, but do not want to use host. Remember, host is mandatory for Home Assistant to operate 100% as it should. Plus, there is also improvement to the UI. You know that when you are trying to create automation or script and you are doing it through the UI, as soon as you mess up with the YAML code, it automatically turns everything into YAML. This has been improved and now you can still use UI editor while keeping the templates into the YAML form. But besides that, there are also a bunch of other very small but very nice improvements. For example, now you can paste the automation or script that you found on the internet inside your home assistant still using the UI because it will be reformatted and you will see it in the UI editor. 
A lot of people do not know what homocysteine is finding and how it is finding. Because of that, we now have ability to discover what homocysteine is discovering. Bidraco has added browsing tool for DHCP, MDNS, ZeroConf, UPMP, SSDP that allow you to see how homocysteine is seeing your network. And you can find this option in the settings, system network, and then click on, for example, DHCP browser, SSDP browser, ZeroConf browser, etc etc but that's not all because we also have some as always backward incompatible changes there are quite a few of them this time and you have to check out if any of them impacts your system for example google maps travel time is changing because google has deprecated the distance matrix api or for example persistent notifications are no longer created when devices are discovered it may seem to you that there haven't been that much changes or updates or improvements or new additions in the mail list of Home Assistant, but actually there are a lot. As always, you can also check the full changelog for Home Assistant Core 2025.5. But remember, this file is very long, there are a lot of improvements, additions, replacements, fixes, etc. etc. that will make your Home Assistant or Smart Home experience much better. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting and if you did find this video interesting don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really means a lot to me and it also helps with the youtube algorithms if you have any kind of a comment question in regard to this video or any previous video as always you can post it down in a comment section below and as always before i end up the video i must say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become youtube channel members Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked and commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.